Good verse. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Amen. Someone want to expound? And a question. Turn it up. Turn it up. Huh? No, go ahead. Go oh. Ahead. Um, it's a comment and a question. Um, the comment, like, like for this verse, I think of when um, Apostle Paul and um, what's his name, Silas, was it Silas or Cyrus that were um, when they were when they uh, cast that demon out of the lady. Right. When she kept like saying, you know, these are the, um, whatever she was saying, and then um, apostle divination. You talking about, huh? You talking about the spirit of divination? What are you talking about? Was it? Yeah, yeah. When they, um, when Apostle Paul, when it says, um, I forget which book, what book is in, but um, Apostle Paul was like, after a Acts. while, the lady kept proclaiming this thing, yeah, and Acts. he got tired. Of, Acts. Yes, yeah. he got tired of it, and he was just like, he basically commanded the demon to come out, and then her boss basically. The guy that was in charge, he got mad, and then he um, sent it before like the um, like the leaders or authoritative figures, and was basically like presenting it to them, like, "Hey, this man is like messing up our money." Then they ended up in prison, but through all of that, it talks about how um, they were beaten. They like beat their, they took their clothes off and everything. They beat them till their clothes came off, and they changed them. They put them in the prison and everything like that, and that was a lot of suffering. Like you would think, you know, this. Apostle Paul just cast this demon out of this woman like it's a good thing and um, they ended up in prison for it and but even with that with the guard um, with the situation that happened when the earthquake occurred and um, the prison door opened and the um, Apostle Paul and, and Silas they stayed in the prison in this story was basically like they the, the guard and his family ended up getting saved from that situation so it's like for a, a lot of the times, like what people, when they talk about the glory, they, they think about themselves. But I've never, I've never really seen a situation where even like in the Bible where God will have you do something just for yourself when it's really for other people. And that's really the glory because this is, this is a God who deserves all this praise but is still thinking of the lost souls or people that need to get saved and stuff like that. So he's always in the business of you like going through things for a soul, for people to get saved. And there's nothing compared to salvation. There's nothing compared to somebody, you know, who, whose path is going to lead to eternal life. There's nothing compared to that. So it's like a lot of the times, like I look at it even in my job, like where I work with my students, I be looking at it like, man, I be getting offers at like other schools to teach there. They got salary and benefits, but I know God has me there for a reason. And just to see the transformation in some of my students' academic life, spiritual life, and even children that I don't, they're not even, I'm not even, they're not even my students and they know about me. They come up to me and they greet me and they see something different. And, you know, they ask questions about salvation. They ask questions about God. They ask questions about how they can better their relationship with God. They ask questions about abstinence. They ask questions about um, relationships. They ask questions about 
what their parents are doing, like, you know, um, being shacked up and having this boyfriend, girlfriend thing, like their parents do it, is it okay, and things like that. And just to offer them truth and see them going towards Christ, it's like they're, all the stuff that I deal with in the background at my job, the persecution, false witness, and all that stuff, is nothing compared to me, like, seeing the growth in these children. Hey, and um, I, also the question. The question was, because um, I didn't want to get, like, ahead of myself or anything, because it, it says glory, but what, like, what will you say glory is if it could be, like, defined or confined in, in, in some kind of phrase or explanation? I'm going I'm to tell you in this area, because if you kind of read the scriptures and understand the... Um, like it says, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also we, um, be glorified together. I want us to understand this. Uh, first, I want you to understand there's two types of, there's more, but two types of suffering. There are times people are suffering for God, and then there are times we are suffering because we are disobedient. A lot of times people confuse that when we, they're suffering for their disobedience, is that they're suffering for God. There's one type of suffering that's suffering to death. And then there's a type of suffering and suffering to the glory. Now, what's interesting when he said that their suffering can't be compared to the glory of God, it cannot be compared to the word that was established over your life. In other words, there's no suffering that could be compared to the glory that God is establishing over your life. In other words, because if you go ahead, if you go back to a couple of verses, before that, like even 16, it says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And, the ch and, and, and if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him. The suffering is not worthy to be compared to the glory. That glory is God's manifested word in you as a son and a daughter. That glory is... If you think about this, think about it like this. The Bible said we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Well, if we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, the word of God, how do we fall short? We fell short for what God desired man to be manifested to be. Sin caused us to fall short. But since Christ came and redeemed us with him now, we can glorify God again through Christ Jesus. Amen. But that suffering, but the suffering that we're going through, meaning that to stand on the word of God, to stand on truth, like even the story that you used about when Paul and them got, they got persecuted because they stood on truth. They stood on the word of God. And when you stand on the word of God, you're glorifying God. But sometimes when you stand on, because watch this, when you stand on the word of God, you're glorifying God because you look like God at that time. How many get what I'm saying? But because you look like God at that time in a society that is wicked and evil, you're going to suffer for standing up on the truth. But he said that suffering is not worthy compared to the glory. It's not worthy compared to what, what God is producing in you, to the power and the love, to be an heir and a joint heir with Christ. It's not worthy to be compared to what God has established over you. See, many times people will sell their birthright to feed their flesh. Anybody good? I just said, and, they, and, and, and what, they, what I mean when they birthright, they, they, they will sell, in other words, they will compromise with the world. And when you begin to compromise with the world, you don't look like God. That's why the Bible says, He who sows to his flesh shall reap corruption. God is not corrupt. You don't look like God when you, when you, when you are, um, when we make decisions to our flesh. But when you stand up on the word, which is spirit, and that spirit is operating in you. You glorify God. And the suffering that you're going through is not worthy to be compared to you glorify God. So what's, if they beat them or whatever, it's not worthy compared what because that glory to God is offered to you as eternal life. Where shall we go, Lord? For in you are the words that lead to eternal life. So when I stand on your word, there's no suffering can be compared to the eternal life that I receive from you in your word. So that's why when you make a decision, you got to measure, you got to ask yourself, what, is this decision worth what is it going to cost me and, 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 I, and I really want to and this part, I really want us to elaborate and understand the part about understanding that 
what God is producing and also understand that not, on, not only understand what God is producing but understand that you're going to suffer when you stand on truth but there's a reward in that suffering amen there's a reward come on come on there's a reward in that suffering but do not I'm gonna say it again while she's coming up here do not confuse you suffering because you were disobedient with this word right here when you suffer because you're disobedient you're suffering because you did something wrong and what you need to do at that point is repent and what is God's goodness God's goodness is that he don't give you what you really deserve for doing something wrong the Bible said repent it's the goodness of the Lord that leads me to repentance. What is God's goodness? His grace and mercy that will not give me what I need at the time that I'm being disobedient. Go ahead. Um, hello, everyone. Um, Sunday, when you were preaching, God pointed this out and he refreshed my memory when I was reading this. But um, you were speaking on um, the cost of our, of our suffering and things like right. that. And he showed me like, like the, um, in the Bible, Job, how he suffered. Right. And for that suffering, it was the glory of God. But you have made a, um, it was a comment about um, where Satan um, asked, was roving, and God asked him, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan didn't see that as a setup. Right. Because all that suffering that and everyone in the bible that he was speaking with consider that as horrible suffering i would i consider it as horrible suffering but look at the glory i mean it couldn't it can't be compared so amen i, I want to say this also based on what something that tracy said the prison guards were the prison guard and his family were saved because they saw the love of god in the midst of the adversity what they saw is men who could have left, but they stayed in place to show those men, because if they would have left, that prison guard would have been put to death because he was responsible for them. So when we show the glory of God, we suffer because when we show somebody, when we stand up on the word, it shows somebody how to get life. You know what I'm saying? It shows somebody how to get life, and it shows somebody what love really looks like. See, if you curse me out and I turn around and curse you out, then they don't see love. They just see anger for anger. But if you curse me out and I turn around and give you a glass of water, they look at me like, I can't believe he gave them a glass of water. They're looking at the love of God and that love of God is causing them to see God. How many of you see what I'm saying? When you stand up on the word of God, the word of God manifests the love of God. To a world that don't understand that that's why that prison guard was like he was messed up when he said we are here we're still here so sometimes you can be free in a situation but you're free you're free in that situation but you got to stay there for somebody to see God we're still here I know why I, why cause I, I, I I'm still here at this job I got to stay here at this job I'm free but I'm still here at this job so somebody can see the love of God that they can be free does that make sense? Go ahead. Um. I like how you said in the be um in the beginning when you said there's two different types of suffering. It's true because um, the suffering that I know that I had in my mind, I knew it was like the spirit because um, like when you let let's say for example you at work and um your boss persecuted you for something that you know in your heart in your right mind you didn't do and now you're like going against them like trying to prove your point or you catch an attitude because you know you right but god doesn't just want you to just do that like just you know stand still but most of the time we try to handle the situation on our own and then they end up not seeing the christ in us because we acted in our flesh but then when we stand and we suffer and we take on the persecution we never know what God can do in the midst of that because now that you stood still you show your fruits you show your character and, and they see the Christ in you they're like what what I done tried you I done this you size you eat, like roll my eyes at you but then you still didn't budge you still didn't it's something in you that like you know the way 
like with that suffering that you take in that is of God, like, you know, because it says to reign with him is to suffer. So that suffering that you're doing for his name's sake, someone else is be able to be redeemed. But when you're not suffering and you're being disobedient now, now you done just failed the test. And now this person's not able to see Christ because you acted upon your flesh. Amen. And understand that those who, when you do something wrong and you suffer, take it. You did something wrong. The, the bottom line, you take it. And they, you don't get a reward because you did something wrong and, and you and you, you um, if you were if you were 30 minutes late to work and your boss sent you home, don't sit there and argue with your boss for sending you home when you were 30 minutes late. Take the 30 minutes and go home and do because why? You had no business being 30 minutes late. Your boss doesn't have to give you grace and mercy. You should have been to work on time. Now watch this, but that's what. But then it goes to what Smurf was saying. But let's say you was on time and your boss going off because then you find he finds out his clock. Watch this. You knew you were on time, but your boss going off. But you don't argue with him and you do it and you and and he, if he say go home, you still go home. And then he find out the clock was wrong. But because you didn't sit there and go off on him and you didn't sit there and act crazy or talk about him. He's walking like, man, that person really carried themselves in a way that caused somebody to see God. Yeah? We have, to, we have to understand that there's a suffering for righteousness. And then there's a suffering because you're messing up. One, you need to know how you're approaching God in both situations. You can approach God in both situations, but you need to know how to approach Him in both situations. Because if you messed up, don't be coming to God all prideful like, you know, they did you wrong when you know you messed up. And don't come to God all prideful like he's supposed to, like, he must be good with you doing something wrong. Come to God with a repent of heart. God, I'm sorry. I repent. I, did, I shouldn't have done that. verse 22 for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now not only that but we also who have the first fruits of the spirit even we ourselves groan with in ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption the redemption of our body for we were saved in this hope but hope that is seen is not hope for why does one still hope for what he sees? But if okay. I want them to kind of pop you on there for a minute. Okay, we were saved in this hope. He's kind of giving you why you can why you should go through all that. He's kind of giving you what the world is waiting for in this situation. But why should you why is the suffering not worthy to be compared? What is the hope that why would you stand on the word of God? Why would you let people persecute you? Why? There's a hope that that you haven't seen yet but you've heard by faith there's a hope there's a in other words people endure because they believe there's a reward in it well god is kind of being trying to be funny he said there's a reward in you enduring you're not just enduring because you're just enduring you're enduring it because there's a reward go ahead, go ahead and speak on if you want to go talk to okay so this chapter, Romans chapter 8, we're talking about being free from indwelling sin. That was the, the title for the first part of the chapter. And this section that we're on now, the caption is, From Suffering to Glory. So we know that when Satan tempted Eve and Adam to commit sin against God, that they inherited sin. And because of that, you know, death came from sin. So in humanity because of sin we die we get sick we catch diseases um you know we have all sorts of illnesses and, and um sinful things that we do and that all comes from sin but when adam and eve sinned not only did humanity suffer but the earth suffered as well 
earth was beautiful. It was glorious. The Garden of Eden had all these trees and fruit, and everything was so peaceful. But after sin came into the picture, even earth became corrupt. Um, trees and leaves now have poison in it. Um, animals now, instead of us naming the animals and have dominion over the animals, animals kill people. You know, they attack each other. Um, trees die. Like there's earthquakes and tsunamis and forest fires and twisters and, you know, um, just so many natural disasters. And all of this comes from the, the fall of man. This all comes from sin. So what Paul is saying in, in Romans 8 in, in these couple of verses is that all of creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God and they're awaiting for that glorious day where everything will go back to the way that God originally intended for it to be. And when we read like the book of Revelation, it talks about how <coughs> when God comes, he's going to destroy this heaven and this earth and he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth for us to dwell on. And in that new heaven and the earth, you know, there's not going to be a sun for God would be the light of the world. It's talking about how the ocean will no longer be there. Um, it will just be straight land so that there's no separation between, you know, the, the inhabitants of the land. And um, it just paints a picture of the beauty, the splendor of what uh, the new earth will look like um, after it suffered this, this course. The next life is going to be um, glorious. And looking up the definition of um, glory, you know, glory. Um, magnificence, splendor, the grandeur, majesty, greatness, nobility, beauty, elegance, honor, prestige, delight, marvel, phenomenal, a spectacle. So this is the um, description or the, the adjectives that, are, that is going to describe um, what it's going to look like once we endure this suffering into the next life. And not only for the earth, but also for humanity. Cross-referencing 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35, it talks about the glory that will be revealed in mankind. Um, verse 35 in 1 Corinthians 15 says, Someone may ask, how will the dead be raised? What kind of bodies will they have? And then it goes on to say that um, in verse 42, it is the same way with the resurrection of the dead. Our earthly bodies are planted in the ground when we die. Because of sin, we die. But we, 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 we will, I'm sorry. But they will be raised to live forever. Our bodies are buried in brokenness, but they will be raised in glory. They are buried in weakness, but they will be raised in strength. They are buried as natural human bodies, but they will be raised as spiritual bodies. And then continuing on, it talks about how that which is corruptible will become incorruptible that which is mortal will become immortal you know and our flesh will be put off and we'll be having a new glorified body that cannot sin we will not get sick anymore there'll be no pain no more tears no more suffering so yes we're suffering now because of the effects of sin but if we just endure through the suffering um in the end it will be all worth it because we're gonna experience a whole new life not only the earth but humanity as well also notice in the word where it says like when I told you earlier when it says um, the wages is, uh, that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God that, that glory of God is established in what God has said in other words God says God said let us create man in our image and after our likeness that's the glory of God. That's the splendor. That's the greatness of God. That man is creating his image of God. We have fallen short from that glory because we're not fulfilling what God has said. That, that word. In other words, if the glory of God is man, when, when, when God says something, God is glorified when what he says accomplishes what he does. God receives glory when it, when, if God says, well, let us create man in our image and after our likeness. When man is walking in the image and likeness of God, that's God's glory. It is the manifesting of God's word brings God glory. When man, when man sinned, he didn't look, in other words, God, when, when man sinned, 
he did not fulfill, he was no longer in a position to fulfill God's glory. He was no longer fulfilled the word of God that God has established. That word was not going to be splendid. That thing, in other words, it was not going to be pure. It was not going to be holy. Once you tanked it, it is no longer pure. It is no longer holy. So therefore, it can't bring glory to God. God's word, when God's words, it being, when God speaks a word and that word is manifested, it's bringing glory to God. When you, when, but when that word does not produce what God says, there's no glamour, there's no glory, there's nothing in that word. There's not, and therefore, uh, when we suffer for, when we suffer for God's namesake, we bring glory to God. The reason why we bring glory to God, because we're standing on what God looked like. We stand on God's righteousness. We're standing on the thing, the word that God has established. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? So that, that, that splendor, that glory, that was, so therefore, because the reason I want to say that, because sometimes people can say, well, man, they, they, people say, this person is really glorifying God. They really, what they're doing, that, that really brings glory to somebody. That's really, it's splendor, it's wonderful, it's magnificent. And yet, what they're doing don't please God. It's not in alignment with the word of God. So how can it bring glory to God if it's not in alignment with the word of God? God's word is met. God's glory is manifested in his word because it is doing exactly what he wanted to do, what it to do. Do we get that? I just wanted to make sure we understood, make sure we understand that. Yes, Tracy. Tracy. Um, one of the parts that stuck out to me was um, the part how it made like a reference to like labor with like birth pangs and stuff. And in my um, in the New King James Bible, it says that like the subtitle it says from suffering to glory, and it talks about that's like it's basically telling you there's a transition, and then it gives this analogy of like birth pains and stuff. And in the first, the, in verse 18, it says, For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So it's like, it's a transition. So I'm thinking, right, you know, when I was in labor, I was sitting in the hospital. Um, I don't want to hear all that, you know. Oh my gosh, you're going to have this beautiful baby. I don't want to hear that. I'm suffering. I'm in labor. I don't want to hear about the glory that's going to come. It hurts. It's painful. But you know it's coming because guess what? When you got pregnant, you found out that you were pregnant. One way or another, the baby's going to come out. Like, it's going to come out regardless. Like, it's going to grow. It's going to grow. And then it's going to manifest. But you don't want to hear that. You get this word. So he basically tells you, listen, you're going to suffer. All right? When you get saved, you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer. But it's not compared to the glory. And then you're like, oh, okay, I'm pregnant. All right, cool. And then you go to hospital, you get admitted, and they tell you, hey, guess what? You're forced into being dilated. You're not going home. And then you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> oh, my God. And then you're like, you're in pain. You're like, oh, my God, this hurts. Nobody touch me. And then you have doctors saying, hey, while you're suffering, I'm going to be around you. And you have all these annoying people that you really want to snap on. But you're like, Oh my God, like what is going on right now? And then you go through this birthing process and then you see this beautiful little baby and they're stretching and yawning, a cute little, you know, baby breath. And they're like, oh my God, you're like, you're so cute. Like you were worth it, you know? So it's kind of, no, seriously, it's true. And you know, that's, it's funny how they did the transition because first it's like, you're given a word. And with this, it's like, I think of trusting God and, and, and having that faith that builds hope because it's like you read the word of God, right? And you're like, God, you be doing some crazy stuff. Like you got axes floating in the in the water. Like your stuff is like his truth is not compared to the world's facts. I'm like, the world's fact says a man and a woman get together and make a baby, but you just bam, Holy Spirit, go ahead and pregnate this woman. She didn't lay with no man. Like that doesn't make any sense. Then you talk about being born again and people are thinking like, oh, I'm going to jump into a wound and like, it doesn't make sense. Like, God, are you serious right now? Like you sound kind of far fetched, but it's like, you have to trust them and be like, all right, God, I'm going to trust that you know what you're doing. Um, I trusted a lot of things. And I remember like last year, when God was like building up my trust, cause I was like, he asked me like a rhetorical question. He's God, he already knows my answer. He's like, do you trust me? I'm like, no, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't trust you. I don't even know you like that. So it was like, you know, I had to get to a point where it was just like, I don't know you, but I read about you. So I'm gonna stand on this word because you've never lied. And I'm gonna trust the fact that you've never lied to me as of yet. So 
if you don't lie at all because your word says you don't lie i'm gonna have to have faith and that faith brings the hope because it's like even though you don't see it you don't see that baby but they tell you hey this baby coming you're gonna have to believe in that word you're pregnant you can walk around and act like you're not pregnant but your belly's still going to grow it's like God's truth like regardless of whether or not you accept the, the truth that it is and he is it's still going to manifest his word is still going to be there like you can't get rid of it you know so yeah amen amen, amen. and I like I actually love how she kind of used it because the the baby being born is the glory uh, why because that's what is supposed to happen that's what's supposed to be manifested at the end of that situation. Um, a woman, if she loses her baby, doesn't feel any glory in that situation. She went through the pain, but she didn't. Why doesn't she? Why does she feel bad? Why does she feel sad? Why does she feel hurt? Because she went all that and it didn't produce what it was supposed to produce. Well, God's word produces His glory. Amen. And and, and God's word produces. The, that's why. The, and, and, and in us, He says, Christ in us is the hope of glory. Why is Christ in us the hope of glory? Because he foreknew us and predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So Christ in us is the hope of glory. What glory? His son in us is that glory that produces what he called us to be since the beginning of time, since he foreknew us. So Christ is producing in us that which he established man to be in the beginning. That's the hope of glory. Amen? And that's why he said we go from glory to glory to glory. Why? Because we're actually constantly being pruned and being taken more like uh, less of us and more him. And we're glorifying God. The more we bear, that's why when we bear much fruit, we glorify God because why? We, we look more like him. We're putting off, we're taking off our sinful nature. We're going and walking in the spirit. We look more like him. So we bring glory to him. And when, that's, why, that's why this, when you go out there and you make decisions and you're not in alignment with the word, it don't please God. He gets no glory out of you saying something. And he gets, God, he watches over his word to perform it. He doesn't get glory because you say so. You get that glory. If you say, you know what? If you say, well, I'm going um, I'm gonna make five million dollars by the five by the time I'm by the time I'm 23 years old. And let's say you go in the street and you pushing and you doing that hustle, and you make five million dollars. That ain't God's glory. That's yours. And that, but see, the glory that you received was built up on corruption. It's built up on death. It's built up on a, a word that didn't bring any life but, but God said you'll be able to obtain it because he said there'll be nothing impossible for man to do if he put his mind so they, they, God said you can be able to go out there and obtain your own glory because there are, there are a lot of people who have made themselves their own God and they achieve things not trying to bring God any glory and I'm talking about there's a lot of people in the church who's doing that today now in the church they are saying God's name but they are seeking their own glory they are prideful. They are arrogant. They are seeking their own glory. They, because to get God's glory, you must be humble. You can't glorify God in pride. You can't glorify God. Your, your wit, your, your wit and who you think you are as an individual, you can't glorify God in that. You, the word says you've got to be willing to deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow him. Now you're glorifying God. And that's why a lot of people, that's why the scripture says, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you scripture to understand this. That's why he said in the last day, he said, they're going to say, Lord, we did this. We did that. He said, I never knew you. Why? Because he understood their intentions and motives were never to bring any glory to him. It was to use the things of God to exalt and to esteem themselves. People, that's why you got to be watching people. They get, they think they so, the people get, they think they so intelligent. They think they so wise in themselves. They think they so witty that they have, it, it's not about God. It's about them. And then at the end, they want to say God. But then when people, they want somebody to call their name. They want somebody to acknowledge him. Me and, I was talking to, um, I was talking, me and, um, me and Elder was talking about this. And we were saying, that's why God says, I sin. God, I told you, there's only two people. There are people who, who go, and there are people who sin in ministry. Everybody in ministry, there's only two types of people, people in ministry. There are those who go, and there are those who are sin. Those who are go are self-glorifiers. But what they have done is, they have let people boost them up. You know what, you can really preach. Or you know what, you sound so, you can really expound on the word. You're so They get self-glorified, and, and therefore, 
they go based on what they think they can do in the ministry. And then they first say, I can do that better than, oh, I can expound on that better than apostle. Oh, God should be too many. And they be, but see, when you are sent, you know it ain't got nothing to do with you. See, when you go on your own, people who go on their own, when you listen to them talk, other people don't boost them up or they begin to perceive that they are something in their own eyes. But those that Jesus sent, like Moses, they, them cats didn't really think they were qualified. They, they, they were humble enough to realize that, they, God, there is, first of all, God, let me, let me explain something to you. There is nothing I can offer you. First of all, God, let me don't come. That's, that's, what, that's, when, that's the first part, you know, you're losing your mind. When you actually think you have something to offer, let me tell you what you can offer God. You can offer God laying on that cross and dying. Second thing about they, they have to understand is that, and I'm gonna tell you, what's the I don't know why God, but they, they they like to frown other people. They're very judgmental and with other people. Why? Because they, their identity is really in how they see themselves. They have no mercy or compassion on other people, and they are very they be very critical on other people. Why? Because when you become your own God, you compare people to you. You're not doing it like this. You don't do it the way I think it should be done. And they are very, they, they love, and I'm telling you what they love. They love to see the inefficiency, the, in, the um, not inefficiencies. The the, the, uh, how can I say it? I won't say the word correct. Um, inefficiencies. They love to see the lacking in other people. They feel good in that. Why? Because that's what their throne is built up off of. Yeah. And they don't esteem others higher than themselves. They don't have a heart to sin. And I'm telling you, that is roaming through religion today, in the church today. You got them in rappers. He not going to give, he will not say, they say, well, only one rapper can go home. Well, I guess you're going to sit out home, boy, I got this. Because they always trying to get notoriety for themselves. But those who are sent, let me tell you why I'm telling you, and, and, and me and Elder was talking about it. Those who are sent, how do you know they are sent? Because watch this. God's promotion process is through humility. Read your word. His promotion process is not through pride. It's not through talent. It's not through gifts. His promotion, he said, he who humbles himself, he will exalt. His promotion process is through humility. Those who go on their own, their promotion process is through self-qualifications. And usually their self-qualifications is based on what they, they think or they feel in their heart they are greater or better than somebody else in a certain thing. I'm going to go start. I think I need to go start because see I, and I, I told Elder, I, I like to use Elder a lot of time because Elder, uh, Elder Akil is really humble. I'm talking, I've been with him for a long time. His humility is like crazy. Some of y'all, see some of y'all may say Elder, because he, cause especially those who train because he be on your case in training but his, so I walked with us, his humility is like crazy and when you look at it he, he's very gifted and talented his humility is like crazy but yet he waits to God he waits to God he waits on God he waits. where I've seen people and they like and they swear and they what they listen and they ain't got no humility at all cats ain't got no humility they so arrogant it's almost sick for almost sickened. and sometimes I'm like you know what God I'm gonna have to tarry with him a little longer I'm gonna tarry a little, a little longer because and they know, and they, and they, and the first thing they want to say is, you know what? God get ready to send me. And I look at them, and I'm like, "You're the most prideful, arrogant person I know. Nobody can't tell you anything." And and, and, it, and it has nothing. And see, y'all may think I'm talking about personality, but I'm really trying to tell you, I'm not saying that to them because I'm. And this is what they say: He's trying to control me. He don't want me to grow. That's what, that's what they say. People are prideful. They say that. I'm saying it because I know scripture. I know scripture. And because I know scripture, and you're not in alignment with it. You know a lot of scripture. Believe me. Oh, my God. I knew brothers who were sitting here. Man, I'm cats were so, they could expound on the scripture. And people would be so impressed how they expound on the scripture. And they were so prideful. They were so arrogant and prideful. And people would, and people would love to gather around. I'm going over to your Bible study. I'm gonna, and I'd be like, dude. It's like the blind leading the blind into a ditch. And they know why? Because and the reason they are easy to go to this person's Bible study, because they they just they their walk with God is, is equivalent to their walk with God. 
it's puffed up on knowledge. It's puffed up on what they think they know. So they like, oh, brother, brother Johnson having a Bible study tonight. Man, Judge Johnson, boy, I love the way he expounded that word, man. I'm going over there, man. I'm going over there. Now, but, but in church, you, they, this is what they say in church. Man, I'm really not learning nothing. I'm not really growing in church. I'm not really growing in church. I really, they don't know why. Those are people who hear, but they do not do. They're not doers of the word because if they were doing, see, growing is not about how much you can expound on the word. Whole, growing is not there how much you can bounce off each other, how much you sit sitting there impressed with yourself because you got, remember, growing is how much you can do the word. And doing the word is to have the ability to humble yourself, submit. Amen. To serve. Humble yourself, submit, and to serve. And I'm talking about humble yourself and submit and serve, not when it's about your purpose. Everybody like to humble and submit when they got their plan, when it's about something they doing. Yeah. But can you humble and submit when it has nothing to do with your plan? And you're not going to get nothing out of it. But somebody else is going to get a reward from it. I'm telling you, this is a stronghold in the church. Oh my God, it's so much pride. In, you know why so much, let me tell you why it's so much pride. Let me, let me say this to you and me and all of us. Everybody in this room got some pride in them. Everybody in this room has some pride in them. Those God can use are the ones who know they have some pride in them. The ones God can't use is the ones who, fa who fail to even realize they got, they're very prideful. There's nobody God didn't use that didn't have some pride in them. But the ones he used realize that they had some pride and they had to die to it. Hey Amen? Y'all get this? See, when you realize you got an issue you spend a lot of time with the issue, the one, the, 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 the issue solver. When you don't think you have an issue, you spend a whole lot of time pointing out everybody else's issue. It's the truth. Oh my God, I can't. You know, like the Pharisees described, this woman was caught committing adultery. They gonna bring. They gonna bring the woman before Jesus. She was first of all. I heard a pastor say one time, "Where were you? Was you were you peeking in the window? What y'all was doing? Y'all peeking in the window while she?" They didn't. Second of all, they didn't bring the man, and they brought this woman who was caught in adultery to Jesus to judge. Jesus set her free by getting them to look at themselves. He said. Let him without sin cast the first stone. The Bible says, evidently they wise in, they wise in us today. Y'all, y'all think I'm joking. Them cats are wise in us today. They really are. Because let me tell you today, I think somebody would have thrown that stone today. I ain't lying. I truly believe somebody, if Jesus was standing there and said, let him without sin cast the first stone. Today, somebody would have threw that stone. I ain't like, oh, I, I believe it. Oh, because we got it. We got to We have an arrogance. We got to relive. We so blind today. We can't. We can't even see God. We know why we can't see Him because we swear we got Him. We swear we saved anyone. We swear. We we swear we so saved. We can't. We somebody would have like, bam, hit the hit in the head. God, I did it. I did it for you, God. I put up and then pick up another one and then throw it down the ones who didn't know it. Oh, I knew you was a sinner too. And you too. Let's go, Jesus. We got to turn the world upside down. I'm serious. I'm serious. I think, I don't know. I just, we, Mike, I don't know, man. We just, because I, I see people, because they, they be like, they, they be like legit, man. They hear the word. We got people, they hear the word, and hear the word, and be and, and, like, you ain't talking to them. 
We do that. We hear the word. We. We hear the word. Some of us, we, we act like God ain't talking to me. You know why you bored with hearing the word here? Because you, you know why? You got, because you ain't no longer receiving it no more. And you know why you no longer see it no more? Because you're so doggone prideful. It's terrible. Your knowledge has caused you to become puffed up. You think you know more than what God is saying here. So you feel like, man, I'm trying. I don't really feel like I need to be hearing that no more. I'm on to something else. No, you're not. You're still where you was. You still, you just puffed up in pride. Because the true essence of the Holy Spirit is the ability to serve others, not serve yourself. God is not interested in your five-step program to success. He's interested in you teaching. He's interested in you supporting. He's interested in you pushing somebody else to his full five-step program to success. Can we get a amen? I know this. Man, I, you know. Because, see, they wait for that hope which is to come. But, see, when you don't have, when you don't understand the hope which is to come, and you don't understand the sonship, and you don't understand the seed, you don't, we, you, we don't, if we don't know the seed came from heaven. Amen? And we don't understand the harvest that he's planting from glory to glory to glory, and how the harvest is growing. And we now believe that new God. It's about, you know, me being, it's about me, me. I told you, we got an I president. We have a president. We have a selfie president because we are selfie people. Trump, Trump, can I use your phone for a minute? Trump loved doing this. He loves taking selfies. But don't get mad at Trump. He only represent the nation in which he served. We have a nation. Y'all get mad at me when I tell y'all, your camera got about 20 pictures, it's just you. Selfie. What God gonna do for me, me, me? We can't even pray long for what God gonna do for somebody else. So creation is not moaning, groaning, waiting for us. Uh, they waiting for the sons and they waiting for the sons. And to be a son, you have to be of this. To be a son, you have to be of the same seed of Jesus Christ. What seed is that? He laid down his life. A seed can't. You can't. Put, you can't be of another. You can't be. A, you can't go around hating people and walking with God. We can't go around enjoying sin and walking with God. And the Bible says, to go here, he said, he who what? He who humbles himself. God says, I'm looking for a generation who will humble themselves. In humility is to obey the word of God. Why? Because that's God's glory. When you forgive, you glorify God. God, like, look at my splendor. When you give, you glorify God. God, look at my, God say, look at my. When you pick up your cross and you kill your flesh, you glorify God. You know what the Bible says? And I'm say this and we're going to finish it. He said, the one who, you know when you look more like Christ? He said, the Bible says, I think it's in Peter. He said, when your boss do you wrong, and you stand there and take it, and you still operate in love and kindness, he said, you look like Jesus now. He said, now you look like Jesus. See, we've been, we've been, we've been preaching, we have not been taught, you look like Jesus once you get the Rolls Royce. You look like Jesus once you get the wife in the house. You look like Jesus once you get the grief. But the Bible says, he said, let, 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 I want to give you my opinion. He said it right here. He also said it here. He says, um, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. He said, when you suffer with him, you glorify with him. 
we say, no, nah, the suffering is only to get to the glory. So the glory is really the car. The suffering is just something we're going through just to... No. The su I, had, I was talking to a young lady today. The suffering is God being developed in you. I mean, the, I'm sorry. The glory is God being developed in you. Like, for instance, the, the baby is the glory. The suffering was what you needed to produce the baby. The glory is the baby. So watch this. The glory is us in the image of Christ. The suffering is what's producing it. Think it not strange that trials come to try your faith. What faith? The word of God in you that it may be manifested through you that they may see God in We got to get this. Christ in me is the hope of glory. Because if Christ is in me, he's producing, the, as it is in heaven, is it, as it, the seed says, as it is, we pray, say, pray this way, as it is in heaven, it shall be on earth, right? Then he sent the seed to produce the nature of how God operates in heaven on earth. God wants to operate his nature through you in the earth. And when you don't let God operate in you in the earth, Satan is operating in you. You're not free. Let me help you and I out. Let me help me and you and out tonight. You are not free. Either you serve God or you serve the devil. Somebody, somebody is guiding you and directing you. One leads to life and one leads to death. Examine yourself. Are you making decisions that's causing you to lead to death? Or are you making decisions where you call where it leads to life? But see, the greatest measurement of that is not really you, it's people looking at your life. Do people eat from your tree? If I ate from your life, would I glorify God? Or if I ate from your life, would I glorify the world? We all used to be that bad tree. We was all in that darkness. Amen? But um, we now have been transformed. I just felt that in my spirit. I just wanted us to get there. Amen. I want us to get there. Because that glory thing, see, glory, that's words sometimes that are really funny in the Bible. We use the word glory and the word faith and these words. And, and, and we have to understand them spiritually. We have to understand. That's why we have to understand what we, and the other word, understanding. Because, see, God wants glory. And he told us how to get glory. He, he already told us how you going to get glory. He said, when you and I bear much fruit, but you can't bear fruit unless you prune the vine. And, 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 and when you put it, and that means it's gonna hurt. That's pain. You can't bear life unless you push, and you're pushing an eight-pound baby. That through some, it, 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 come on now, it's it like ah, yeah, you push an eight-pound baby. That means you. What if you look at that spiritually? What it means? He's trying to push forgiveness through a small hole. He's trying to push compassion through a glimpse in you. He's trying to push humility through a... And he has to stretch you. And it is painful for you to tell somebody, I'm sorry. It is painful for you to, to, to humble yourself to somebody. It is painful to ask somebody to forgive you when they did you wrong. It is painful to go tell somebody you're sorry when they say something nasty to you. It is painful. Why is it painful? Because it's stretching you out of your fleshly name. It's stretching you out of this flesh. Just like a woman has to stretch her flesh to bring life. Spiritually, you got to stretch your flesh out of this nature. And to stretch your flesh out of this nature, it hurts. It hurts. To exalt someone higher than yourself because we've been taught I gotta do me I've been taught I gotta look out for me I gotta go make this happen we have not been taught 
help somebody else make their make their dreams come true we haven't been taught how to serve everybody want to be served don't nobody want to serve Everybody, you know, it's almost, it's almost, it's almost fun to use this analysis. Everybody want to be LeBron James. But give me San Antonio. Give me five players. They, they say LeBron's five and one. Put LeBron on the court by himself against a team like San Antonio. He will lose every time. Because even though you can play all five positions, I got five men who can do what you can do. So you got to pass yourself the ball. You got to dribble the ball. You got to go. They got some. Give me somebody who's going to serve the whole team. I'm not saying LeBron. I'm trying to show you something. That's why Jordan couldn't win a championship his first couple of years. Why? He was about just Jordan. Until he got a Scottie Pittman. Until he began to learn a team concept. Because all you have to do the first five years was just let Jordan scope lock everybody else down he scored 50 points but your team scored 110 he lose God is a team player God is a team player and Jesus Christ was a team player he told his disciples he went and got 12 team players and said guess what you're going to do what I have done and even greater he said I want you to do what I have done and even greater and everything he did was to exalt them. Everything he did was to exalt them. That's the mentality of the kingdom. That's the mentality of the body of Christ. And if we stay, I tell people all the time, I tell, my, I tell the leaders in this ministry, I say to them, and some of them don't listen, I say to them, if you don't do, if you could do me one favor please stay humble God proper God used somebody to prophesy all of a sudden they prophesied and they was right they were like oh my God what you said was absolutely correct now they all over Dade County trying to prophesy <laughs> They don't rent it. They don't rent it. They don't rent it. The, 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 they, don't, they don't rent it. The hall. They don't rent it downtown. Um, what they think downtown? Um, the Gusman, huh? The night James L. Night. They don't rent it. James L. Night Center. And you like. And I know God, I know God, I know God got to be in heaven be like, tell me he's joking. Tell me he's joking. Please tell me he's joking. But you know what's funny? He'll, this, is the fun, this is the part that's funny. Today, the time we're in, he'll feel that place. Y'all laughing. The time that we're in today, he'll feel that place. How do I know that's true? Because it's being done. It's being done already. It's being done. It's being done. Oh man, he's charismatic. Somebody heard him preach. He's charismatic. Next thing you know, that cat like. Yeah, man, when I preach, everybody, everybody, man, they get lit up. People were like, go, go on, preach. But he a novice. So now here come, here come pride. And I'm going to tell you, as one who's been through the process, oh, pride is a, pride can creep in on anybody. Pride can come in. Pride will tell you in a minute, you ain't got to go through that. 
You don't know, excuse me, you don't know who I am. I prophesied five years ago. <laughs> and I done missed a few and had to leave a couple of cities, but I'm still good. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 25. But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts know what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God say it again he who searches the hearts know what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God anybody want to expound Yeah. Um, while I was reading that scripture, it led me to a cross reference in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, which says, But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, even the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of that man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of God, that we might know the things that we have been freely given to us by God. So when I think of like, um, going back to Romans, it's talking about going from suffering to glory. In our suffering state, not only, like I said, is the earth um, suffering because of you know poison and and death and natural disasters and things of that sort um and not only is human suffering physically you know we get old we get sick you know we die but even internally you know there is a suffering in us um in our spiritual um man and so like even when we pray like we have weaknesses and infirmities in our prayers because we even though like we're born again and we're saved like sometimes we have we do have like this carnal nature inside of us which we talked about earlier on in chapter seven the things that you don't want to do you do the things that you want to do you don't do although we're saved we still have like um a sinful nature and we have a carnal mindset and so when we pray sometimes we're praying from that that corrupt uh, mindset so let's say for example you're in a situation and you were living with your mom and your mom's like, you know, cursing you out and you're saying in prayer, oh God, you know, like just take me out of this situation. Like by you getting taken out of that situation, like you're not birthing the glory of God. Like you're praying like in your flesh, in the weakness of your flesh. But if you had the spirit of God in you praying, making intercessions through you, your prayers might sound something different, such as man, God, you know, my mom is really like, you know, treat me bad but give me the strength to love her, um, to cause her to see you, you know, through the way that I treat her. Or, um, for example, you got issues with your baby dad and you're like, man, God, like, I can't stand him, get on my nerve. He's not paying his child support. He's not seeing his child. Man, God, I pray that you just kill him. Just make him go to jail. Like, do something to him to cause him to see how I feel. And that's like you praying in your weakness, you know, but if the spirit of God is inside of you, the spirit of God would be like, no, pray for him to get saved because you're upset with him because of the way that he treats you and how he neglects your child. But if he was saved, he wouldn't act that way. If he was saved, he would have the love of God in his heart to, to come and um, take care of his child and to respect you as a child's mom. So the spirit inside of you will make intercessions based off of the will of God. You know, when we pray, we pray... Um, in the book of James, it says we pray amiss. Um, we fight and we war, but we don't get because we don't ask God. You know, but when we do ask God for things, we still don't receive it because we ask with wrong motives. We ask in a way for us to get out of the suffering. 
and if we get out of the suffering, then the glory can't be produced through us. So God is not going to cause us to pray to get out of um, the fire. He's going to cause us to pray to give us strength and that hope and that, that provision, that guidance that we need to come through the fire that we might come through as pure gold. And we think even of like Jesus, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, like before he was crucified, you know, his soul was overwhelmed even to the point of death where he said to the Father, God, like, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. Take this cup from me. You know, he's praying in his weakness. But the spirit of God in him, the Bible says that the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. So his flesh is like, man, I can't take this. I don't want to die on the cross. This is going to be painful. Take this cup away from me. But he allowed the spirit to pray, intercede through him on his behalf. And the spirit says, you know what? Not my will, but your will be done. Because the spirit will always pray in accordance to the will of God. I want y'all, I want us in this room, we can keep reading. I really want us to get what Minister Devon was talking about. Because, first of all, you need the spirit of God to pray according to the will of God. You need the Spirit of God to pray according. Because if you don't have the Spirit of God, you're going to pray to God according to your own will. Your spirit is going to pray according to the things you know man won't. What you want. The reason why we need the Spirit of God, because I, I love how Devon said it, and I was like, man, my spirit was just leaping. Many of us, you are asking God to deliver you from the travailing. You're asking God to deliver you from the, from the process that births the glory. Yeah. You're asking God to take you out of the storm. And you don't realize that the storm is not worthy to be compared to the glory. The hope of that which God. And some of us, you didn't ask God anything. You took yourself out the, the storm. You quit. You shifted it. You did, you, you began to, see, you have to understand something. Satan was down there looking at Jesus too and said, get down. See, Satan is saying, get down, save yourself. Jesus said, I'm about to produce some glory that's going to destroy you. People run from God. And the reason I want y'all to hear what man of God was saying in, in his word is because you can also see how the church has twisted it. Religion, not all the church, religion has twisted it. Because religion says that you're going through all this to get to obtain some tangible thing. Religion saying that you're suffering to obtain some tangible thing. No, that's not what this script, that's not the, the glory of God is not some tangible thing. But when you see what religion has said, you can see how they try to preach another gospel. They're not, they're not preaching a gospel that begins to bring glory to Christ. They bring a, they're preaching a gospel that brings glory to themselves and trying to use Christ. The glory of God is Christ in you. Christ in you is the hope of glory. And to birth Christ in you, you're going to suffer. You're going to go through a process. And there are people who say, that's what I tell you right now. You can't be soft and follow God. You can be soft and live in the world, though. See, the world, what the world call hard, God said that's soft as, that's soft as cotton candy. Anybody can pull a gun on somebody. Anybody can get drunk, get out. Anybody can do things like that. What's hard, what's hard is to deny yourself. <laughs> to deny yourself, to sell yourself, to, 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 to submit to the word of God and tell yourself you're going to die to your own desires. Anybody can fulfill that. If, I, if, if my desire is going to have sex, I'm going to have sex. If my desire, when I was in the world and I was not saved, Whatever desire I wanted, I didn't have to be hard to go feel, fulfill that desire. I would use women or do what I had to do to fulfill that desire. It wasn't hard about that. But when I got saved 
and I accepted the seed from heaven that came to produce the kingdom on earth that seed in me when my flesh wanted to still go out there and have sex it took being hard to tell this flesh sit down you're not doing it it's hard to tell the truth when you know you're going to get in trouble it's hard watch this it's hard to tell the truth when you know they're going to kill you because of it because that's the time we're coming into they're going to ask you if you're a Christian and if you say yes they're going to kill you they're already doing that in other countries they are in other nations if you walk into one of those uh, in Iraq or one of those countries what they call that the Middle East the Middle East if you walk into one of them and you go around wearing no Jesus shirt in the Middle East, certain places, they will cut your head off. That's why you know there ain't no play play Christians over there. See over here, you can say Jesus. What the play people? What they, what's the worst they gonna do? Look at you like you. <laughs> you old. I done had people get mad and want to turn away from God because somebody called my Jesus free. Oh, they be calling me names and they be talking about me. They don't want to hang with me. They tell my oh Jesus freak. I be like, and you upset about that. Yeah, I don't want to be nobody freak. You was a freak when you was in the world. When you was in the world, they walked around, they called your names like Thought, Thought. They called your names like Sean. They called your names like Thug. They called your dog. They called your game. All those insults, and you was like, yeah. Don't call me B, call me Miss B. H B I C. <laughs> All right, Miss Miss Female Dog. But when you came into the kingdom. You receive the spirit that knows the heart of God. Not your, woo, not your heart. It knows the heart of God. And it's bringing you the things Amen. of God in you. Amen. And watch this. That's why God ain't going to move. See, when you get the heart of God, God won't that person saved like he wanted you saved. So your prayer should be with your baby daddy. God, show me how to get to his heart. Show me how to show him you. When you start praying like that, that's when the scripture said the sincere prayers of the righteous prevail. But your prayers are not prevailing because they ain't righteous. That's right. That's right. That's right. They ain't righteous. God, Lord, you know if he don't get right, I'm leaving him. Send me a sign so I can know I can leave him, Lord. <laughs> Lord. Yeah. God, if Lord. You will, kill me. This job. <laughs> this job. That job. That's right. And then it got the nerves to be like, Lord, this job. You got to la 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 Lord, that's great. The boss don't like me, Lord. My coworker's jealous of me. My coworker's jealous. My co say it again. My coworkers are jealous. They trying to take my position, God. They want my position, Lord. They hate us. They hate us, Lord. And then they find somebody with them. Let's pray together. Pray. Lord, what two or three are gathered in the midst? Lord. Yes, Lord, God. they dislike us, Lord. Yes, God. Lord, we pray they get fired. In Jesus' name. They get fired. In Jesus' name. They get fired. God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Lord, you said, you know, they get loud too. When two or three again, Lord. And we ask anything in your name. Ask anything. We shall receive it. Yes, Lord. God. And not let me watch this. Y'all know they do too. And then they come to work, talk them up. Oh, Jesus, get up, Jesus. 
they come and we're talking about their stomach and you swear that's God. That's not the will of God. Last time I checked, the will of God is that none be lost. And none be lost. So if the Spirit of God is making intercession and searching the Spirit of God to bring to you mm -hmm. the Spirit of God, His desire is none be lost. Now, let, let, now we know we got to bring some clarity too. Yeah. I'm not, if, if somebody is punching you in your face, I was about to say that the Spirit of God does say tearing the right cheek though. <laughs> if you're being physically abused, God has in His Spirit, if you're even married, that there's a separation. But that, watch this. But the separation is just for you to get in a place out of the violence to pray for them. The separation does not cancel the prayer or the fasting. See, when we preach in a way that says your haters, and your haters just hating, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you false doctrine. And, and, and your haters, they hate no you. Because God go is your season. And God is moving through you. And they see what God is doing in you. Uh, and they see you prospering. Uh, and they can't, they, and they hating and they, they disliking you. But don't worry about it. Uh, don't worry about it. Because just walk in front of your haters and let them see God's glory on that new watch and, and their new job promotion. Uh, let them. That's not the. Yeah, there they go. He going to set a table for you in the presence of your enemy. Why? So you can serve your enemies. That's the reason he's going to set a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Why? So you can serve your enemies. Because he set a table before Jesus in the presence of the enemy. And he served his enemies. He had his enemies dip bread. Listen, we must digest this. Because some of us, your breakthrough is... As the man of God, God gave the man of God illustration, is your ability, you need to change your prayer life. Amen. And you need to ask God, God, forgive me for how I've been praying. Why am I telling you to ask God to forgive you for how you've been praying? Because you have not been praying in faith. Amen. And the Bible says anything that's not in faith can't please God. Your change, the Bible said, the sincere prayers of the righteous shall prevail. Mean that you're going to get victory when you pray according to the will of God. But you must exercise God, who he is, in the midst of you getting. In other words, your trial is birthing the virtue that they need to pull from to get their deliverance. Y'all better hear what God just said. Your trial is birthing the virtue in which they need to get delivered. Amen. Meaning your ability, your trial is birthing in you patience. They need patience to be delivered. Amen. Amen. Your trial is birthing in you self-control. They need to see something they ain't seen before. Let your light so shine that men may see your good works. That they may glorify your Father. Let, you, let, you, let it shine. Did we not read? He said to reign with him is to suffer. We don't want to suffer. For somebody else. We like to say stuff, they ain't gonna never get it. Man, I'm tired. They keep calling me every day. 
And you have to have the Spirit of God because the Spirit of God can say to you, release them. He can say that too. Turn them over. To the, in other words, let them go down. They're not ready yet. Just the Spirit of God can't say that. They're not ready yet. Let them, let, turn them over to Satan that they might be saved. Turn, what, what, what does that mean when he said, he said in the Acts? Did he not say the Acts? Turn them over to Satan. That, why? What is he saying? Stop turning them over to the devil they want to play with. And when the devil they finish, when the devil they finish, when he get through war, destroying their life, they're going to be ready to be saved for real. See, we have to understand the need, the reason why we have to have such a close relationship with God because it's not always the same answer for every person. Amen. It's on. not generic. That's right. Meaning that his desire is for all be saved. How Minister Dave Bond get to Fort Lauderdale is the turnpike. Well, I got to Fort Lauderdale taking the 441. Jessica get the 440, uh, Fort Lauderdale taking 27. God says, I just want them to Fort Lauderdale. But see, some of us, you get mad because they don't go the way you went. Your testimony, a lot of times, is not for them to go the way you went. Your testimony is for them to know it's possible to go. I want to say that again. Your testimony is to let them know that it's possible to get to Fort Lauderdale. It doesn't mean that they're going to go for 41 like you win. So why, why do we get frustrated? Because let's say Devon say, well, I need everybody to go to Turnpike. Why? Because the Turnpike is faster. But then God says, no, I'm taking them on 27. Because 27 got a light on every corner. And I need to slow them down because they got some issues I need to deal with before they get to their destination. Because he who is forgiven much, love it much. And you need much, some, this person need much forgiveness. So I need to slow them down. Stop. Stop. Well, Davon, just a continue ride. His content. So when he ministers someone, he tells them their testimony, but he allows the spirit because he always needs to be connected to the spirit so God can reveal him how to deal with that situation. Especially since this is a disciple class. Because this is a disciple class and you are being trained to be ministers and you are being trained to be pastors in the presence, you need to understand that the sheep don't all act the same way. The sheep all don't go the same way. So you can't be fostered. Even in your household, you might have one son that want to get saved real quick. And then you got another son, he like. You might have one daughter, she like. She, just, she in the club, she getting towed up. She get, and then you got another daughter, she like. She in the word. And God says, I don't want you to give up on either one. Even though it's fun of sitting there with the because me and the daughter that's studying, it's fun sitting there with her. But with the other one, it ain't fun because I gotta be praying and fasting all the time. <laughs> I feel like I'm dying. Anybody see what I'm saying? I feel like I'm dying. I'm like, I like hanging with my homeboy. We, 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 we sit there and we go over the world. He be like, he shopped at me, I shopped at me. But then Brother Jojo called me and Brother Jojo questioned everything I say. Well, why did Jesus ride on a donkey? You couldn't find a horse? No, it was written in the word. Was he naked when he was on the donkey? No, they laid their garments before him. Uh, okay. Then you see him two weeks later and ask you the same question over again. See, we don't want to tarry with nobody. 
Remember I told you, he gave us a president. He gave, he's been giving us, I know from the last four, I can give you prophetically from the last four, from Clinton to the Bushes. I give you prophetically from Clinton to the Bushes to, to Obama to um, Trump. Trump is a production of a producing of all of them. Trump is a very self-absorbed president. Though, but I'm telling you something. See, but this is the question. If you think God has given up on Trump, you are insane. Watch this. Trump has done things that other presidents for, for, for the kingdom that you'll be like, how does he do this? Why is God using the man just declared your rule. He just fulfilled scripture. He just fulfilled something Obama wouldn't do, Bush wouldn't do. He just fulfills, God used to fulfill scripture. Knowing that when he fulfilled that scripture, that he was going to be hated. He pronounced, that's God. He declared, and watch this. All these haters, I wanted to go so bad, but God didn't want to let me do it. All these hypocrites, all these so-called Christians, all these so-called black Christians who love to say stuff negative, who love to trash them, who love to say, what are your comments now? Where is Facebook with all your hatred? The man just declared Jerusalem as the captain capital of Israel. Your so-called God, some of them, they so-called God who was Obama, he didn't even have the courage to do anything like that because he wanted to be liked so much. But see, you can't see spiritually. So you hate because you cannot see. I'm not saying Obama's perfect. I'm not saying Trump is perfect. I'm not saying they're just men. Stop looking at the man and start looking through look, start looking through the spirit. God uses men to show his purpose. God use you and you still wicked in certain areas. You want to cast people, I, I trip, you want to cast stone at uh, uh, Donald Trump or Obama you, and we want to cast stones like your life look good. If all camera, if all cameras was on you all day, I'm sure we'll find some stuff. Oh, look at that little heathen! I thought they were saved. You just ran a stop sign, sinner. You just rolled your eyes at your boss, sinner. Because the Bible said gestures. We don't want to look at. We want to look at their position and what God is doing. You gonna tell me you don't see, you don't think that was just God that had him declare? Jerusalem, do you, y'all don't understand what happened? He declared what God established from the beginning. He declared Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. You know why presidents wouldn't come back? Because they let people cause them to be afraid. You're trying to be somebody, speak the truth. When you speak the truth, what is God trying to show us? He said, you selfie generation. When you speak truth, people are going to hate you. See, it ain't about him. He's trying to show you certain things. But you got to see him in the spiritual realm. I, I'm just trying to be, I, I would have loved to see some of those ones over there. Why didn't you go on your Facebook and applaud him for having the courage to do something that, that, men, that men before him wouldn't do? See, don't let your emotions and your hate cause you to be blind to seeing God because Ain't no man perfect. Stop looking for the man. Look for God in the man. See, we look at we look at our president like you choose a boy. You look at your, we look at our president like you choose mates. 
you're looking at the person instead of looking for the God in the person. He looks perfect. Satan like, I got you. He looked messed up. Satan like, I got you. Look at somebody, you gotta go deeper. What time is it? Let's read a little bit more. Go ahead. We got a few more minutes. We're gonna read a little bit more and then go get ready to go. Go ahead. Okay, come on. Hi, family. Hello. Bear with me because my gift is tears. Um, I have been like so moved tonight. My youngest baby is living with somebody who's beating her and keeping her on drugs. And she keeps saying to me, why, mom? God won't get me out of this because I tell her, pray. And I haven't been praying for him because I hated him. I wanted him and I was foolish and I would sit in my prayers and I would say, God, just take him out of her life. Just take him out. I don't care what you do with him, just take him out. And then somebody said to me that she was going through the same thing and she prayed for her daughter's boyfriend and she was praying, just kill him, God, just kill him, just take him out. And one day her prayers changed too. If there's any good in him, bring it out of him, but also take him out of my daughter's life. And that made it harder. I mean, that made it, <laughs> that made it so easy for me to say, if there's any good in him, save him. But if whatever you do, take him out of my daughter's life. That was my prayer and it wasn't working because I couldn't humble myself enough to admit that I hated this person, but coming here, I realized he's just as lost as I am. So yesterday I prayed for his salvation and And God is good because, you know, verse he gave me, he said, pray for your enemies because it's like heaping coals on their heads. And it, it was maybe wrong to think it like that way, but it did give me a little peace. And I've realized that there has got to be good in him because like you said, pastor is, he's one of his too. And when I prayed like that, when my prayer was, and I sat down and I was just like, oh, I don't know what to say because you know my heart is not this, but I'm going to be obedient to you and I'm gonna pray for this man. And I'm gonna still pray that no matter what, that you take him out of her life, but that you do save him. Only because I think that she, she needs to be on her own feet in order to be on her knees. He's got to break her before. This man is already broken, so he needs a salvation. And my daughter is broken, and she needs a salvation too, but she is not broken enough yet, um, which is terrible. But it's changed me. So when we're sitting there and we don't know what to say, that was what that verse made me think of, you know, the groans when words won't come. And I just, I fall back on that and I say to myself just oh and and the spirit I know will speak for me what God's purpose is because I cannot verbalize it and I cannot even manifest it in my own brain so anyway the long story short is when you feel like you have no words just believe that God is there and he knows he knows what you really want. I don't want to see this man suffer. He is. And as much as it's hurting me, it's for a reason. And God can use him. And it, who am I to say no? So thank you for putting up with my tears. <laughs> Hold up. I want to stand right there. Let us stand right there. I'll, I'll, I'll let us stand, no, stay right there for a minute. Stay right there for a minute. 
um, you know what? God understands how a mother feels. Why? God saw his son get beat down by his bride. God, what's happening to her daughter, God saw happen to his son. By the, by, because by us. Because Jesus was getting beat down and God saw that. God saw that, just like he sees tonight. But I believe this, because we we're about to keep reading, but I believe God stopped that because, and he had her come, because there's, the Bible says this. The Bible says, when two or three touch and agree, whatever they shall ask the Father in his name, this should be done. And there might be people in here tonight Maybe that's what God wanted tonight. And it's not just her. But see, her victory came from, her victory comes from, she's willing to admit. See, first of all, we have to get to the place where we have to accept that we did it wrong. And if that's you, I want you, if you, I can't make you get up, but you gotta, you gotta, for your change, you have to begin to accept that you've been praying the wrong way. And I want to say this to you. It's not always the wrong way in that area. Some of us, I got to be real with you. You're praying the wrong way in other areas. You're praying that God does things for you, not for the person that you're with. What I mean by that, I, I'm going to touch it. There are men, there are men, you're going to seek God because you want that woman, not because you care about her condition or her soul. That's a selfish prayer. You, but we learned tonight that the Spirit searches the things of God. And tonight God said when we search, we have to, the Spirit has to search. And when we understand that it's searching because it desires the will of God to be prayed, that, it may be, that God may begin to be in alignment with, with His Word. Amen? So if you're sitting there t tonight and, and you know, well, you know what? I've been praying the wrong way. Because see, we got people sitting in the, even here today. You, you've been praying for God to give you this, give you that, do this for you. To, you need to check your prayer life. But tonight I want us to pray with her. And I want us to pray for anybody else. That's saying, you know, because we have mothers and we have fathers and we have people. We have baby daddies and we have baby mamas. We have grandma, we have people that we need, we got grandmothers, we have people we need to pray for. But we want to pray tonight according to the will of God. Amen? We want to pray tonight because God, God loves her daughter and God loves that young man. Now, God, the prayer is, like she said, the prayer is, it's not by, it's my prayer, that God separate, but God deliver. Because let me tell you why the prayer is God separate and deliver. Because if God doesn't deliver, he's just going to beat somebody else. And if God don't deliver, she's just going to find somebody else who's going to be. That's why the deliverance has to be not just, that's why Jesus died. It wasn't just, he said, this is for somebody else. And that's why Tracy said, they stayed in the prison. See, when we pray, we have to pray understanding. If we just pray for our child, all we're doing is extending it to somebody else's child. If they don't get delivered, then it goes to somebody else. If we want the person to be delivered because they're not just hurting you, they are hurting other people. So that's you. Get out your seat. And, 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 you, and you know, come and pray. But we have to pray tonight. Lord, you know what Jesus said at the end? Let me tell you what the flesh battle was. The flesh battle was, it did not want to go through the suffering. Jesus didn't either. Jesus, at, when Jesus was in the, in the garden, his flesh was confronted with dying. And he had a battle with dying to the flesh. But watch this. But he said, God, 
unless the grain fall to the ground and die first, nobody else can be transformed. Nobody else can be changed if I don't pray and die in this situation. And he says, you know what, God, but it's hard. So God ain't mad at you because you're saying it's hard. God ain't mad at you. Jesus said, let me say something. Sometimes you got to go pray and get up and go look for help, go pray. If Jesus did it in the flesh, we probably, we got that same battle. Can I get an amen? So don't beat yourself up because you get up and you, you start, no. But Jesus got to the place where he said, the spirit got to the place that, where it connected and said, I got to pray from the spirit that's in me, not from my flesh. And say, Lord, and he said, Lord, not my will, but your will. And God, if I got to be, if I got to go through this and be patient, if I got to go through this and be suffering. But see, when, oh, I feel this in my spirit. See, the problem with us is this. When you pray, do you believe? Believe in something before you see it changes the atmosphere see what am I trying to get you to understand if I pray and I believe it I'm going to talk to them I'm going to talk to them according to what I believe and not what I see in other words if my daughter is getting beat down if my daughter is messed up with her, I'm not going to talk to her according to her condition why because I believe when I went to God that he heard me when I prayed and that she's getting impregnated with the word that I have prayed because the sincere, the, the prayers of the righteous prevail it much. So I got to now talk to a girl, you a queen. Girl, you, girl, you know what? You whole, you complete. You know what? Ain't no man going to ever hit you again. You back. And she's looking at me like I'm crazy. Yes. They're looking at you like you're crazy because you are speaking those things are not as though they are. Somebody say, faith! <laughs> Woman, you got to stop speaking what you look at and say, girl, you are virtuous. You are a queen. You are the apple of God's eye. Oh my God, you know what? You blessed in the city and coming. And she looking at you and you saying that you bless coming and going and she's in a house of chaos but you call her blessed why because you know that God is watching over the word that you have prayed and that word is going to produce it God says can you speak it before you see it can you speak it before you see it he said mama you are so blessed mama you bless Mama, you are set free. Mama, you are full of love. You are virtuous. Mama, you are tender-hearted. He says, speak those words. Daddy, you are king. Daddy, you are royalty. Daddy wasn't there. For, my, my daddy wasn't even there. He will not even talk to me. I done prayed for him. Now I got to speak what I prayed. Because let me tell you like this. If you don't believe it to see it, am I right? He said, when you pray, believe. Didn't I say that? Because watch this. Let me tell you. Let me give you, let me give you scripture. I hear the scripture. He says, he says, faith. You must believe that he is rewarder to those who diligently seek him. You diligently seek God in behalf of that person. He said in his word, and he cannot lie, that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. You diligently seek God because you believe that he is. That he is and that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. You know that God can do what you cannot do. But see, if you know it, you got to start speaking it. People ask me, Apostle, when they call me, I'll be like, I'm so blessed I can't stand myself. You stand me for me. 
Pastor, why are you always speak? Why? Because my job is to declare, yes, my wife, yes, my wife is no longer working. That's $47,000 gone out the house. But I'm so blessed. I'm extremely blessed and blessed extremely. My situations don't change my testimony because my God is able. So I, am, I say I'm in lack of nothing. I want to say that some of y'all up here, open up your mouth and start speaking what you see and speak what God say. Open up your mouth and start, stop talking about you want to have a great relationship with your mama and daughter, daughter and start speaking it. Stop talking about, well, me and my mama don't get along. Me and my mama going, we tight. We extremely blessed. Girl, why are you going to want to talk about Because we tight. What you mean we tight? I already prayed on it. We good. We good. That's why the Bible calls you peculiar. Because you look peculiar to the world because you have the ability to declare and decree things they cannot see. I can see me and my mama shopping now. We shopping and we, we are Bessies. Me and my mama are Bessies. We are the, see, we are, because what's happening, you're praying and then you allow your words to cancel out your prayer. I'm praying for my baby daddy, but I can't stand him. No. No, no. I'm praying. Me and my dad, we close. I love my dad. I love my mom. My baby daddy, you know what? I would think I forgive him. He gonna be watch this. You 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 will mess people up if you say, like, my baby daddy, I forgive him. Oh, and he a mighty man of God. What you just said? He a mighty man of God. Girl, and you know, you know the devil going, you know the enemy gonna send them Sue says, girl, he ain't even paying you no child support, girl. He ain't he a deadbeat. No, no, he a mighty man of God. That brother so he's so blessed, I can't even stand him. Oh, he's going, oh man, that brother got so much wisdom. He's so filled with the Holy Ghost. Who are you talking about? I'm talking about my baby daddy. What baby daddy? You got another baby daddy? No, my baby daddy. How you going to say that? Because I pray for him. Because I pray for him. My boss, my boss has power, love, and a sound mind. My boss got power, love, and a sound mind. My boss got all kind of godly wisdom and knowledge and understanding. My boss is compassion and love. What boss you talking about? You talking about the one who just cursed you out, yeah? Uh, uh, how you going to say that about her? I prayed for her. I, you know what I said? People thought I was crazy. My, let me tell you what I told you. I told it hasn't been a job I went to that somebody don't get saved. So I expect it. I expect it. And because I expect it. Didn't he say with expectations? He said like earnest expectations. Expect, I, expect, I, I expect the word of God. See, your daughter already saved. She saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. She writing books testifying ministering to women who have been abused she already walking in the glory of God why because the prayers of the righteous prevail much we walk by faith and not by sight we walk by faith and not by sight we walk by faith and not by sight. When we pray according to the will of God, we walk by what the word says, not by what we see. It's funny how false doctrine has it. False doctrine say name it and claim it. Even well, girl, you got to see yourself as a mirror. You have to see yourself as a millionaire. Go into the store and act like you're a millionaire already until you get to the cashier. 
The world say, fake it till you make it. God says, believe it till you see it. God don't say, fake it till you make it. He said, believe it till you see it. My marriage, oh, it's going to be wonderful. My wife is virtuous. My husband, we do not argue. We have, my husband, we will communicate in a loving manner. I'm declaring the creed. You are God's mouthpieces. Open up your mouth and stop waiting to see something and declare it and decree it. When, do you know when you call somebody blessed, when you call somebody being saved, you are declaring the will of God? God, this is what you said. You said, my daughter, you said you came for the lost. God, she lost. She qualified. She qualified, God. You said that you will heal the broken heart. God, she qualified. And you can't lie. God, you said you came. God, you said, not me. You said you came to destroy the works of the enemy. God, you said it. You said you will destroy. The enemy is tearing up my daughter. It's tearing up that young man. But God, you said you came to destroy his work. God, you said it. Come on now, let's do it. You said it. You said it, God. I'm just, look at somebody say, look at somebody say, look at them in their face say, I'm just crazy enough to believe. I'm just, for, I'm, a, I'm a fanatic for Jesus Christ. I'm just crazy enough to believe it. That's all, I'm just crazy enough to believe. I'm, I'm crazy enough to believe God, you can snatch, you can snatch the taste of cigarettes or weed right out their body. I'm just crazy enough to believe it. They're not going to have to go to no rehab. They're not going to have to go to no alcohol anonymous. I believe God. I'm crazy enough to believe that you can, while they sleep tonight, that you can reach in them and snatch it out of them. Oh! Miracle worker. I'm crazy enough to believe they say, they say schizophrenic. I'm crazy enough to believe that you can bring that mind back, God. Woo! That you can bring that mind back to normal. They say they'll never be normal. I'm crazy enough to believe that you can bring the mind back to normal. They say she gonna die of cancer. Well, I'm gonna pray and see what the spirit wants first. Y'all say, why? Because the spirit might want to take them home. But I know, I know that if you cancer if you're telling to leave I'm crazy enough to believe if they had for a stage four and cancer all through their body and their lungs I'm just that crazy to believe that if you tell cancer to cease it got to cease I believe you God We believe you. And we're in this room tonight. We are in agreement with our sister. We're crazy enough to believe. We just believe. We, ain't we, cra we got crazy faith. I would say three days there's going to be a shaking in that house. Three days 